Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines Spurious Likha claims 22 lives in Motihari, Bihar. Center to bring out a new cooperative policy soon to increase per capita income of farmers. India all set to lead diabetes research in the world, says Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. Nomination process picks up for the coming assembly elections in Karnataka. Fierce fighting reported between army and paramilitaries in Sudanese capital Khartoum. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeat Delhi Capitals by 23 runs at Bengaluru. Another match between Lucknow Super Giants and Punjab Kings underway in Lucknow. In Bihar, 22 people died after consuming spurious liquor in different areas of Motihari in East Champaran district of the state. Some of them lost their eyesight. The condition of 17 people is critical and they are undergoing treatment in different hospitals of Motihari and Muzaffarpur. Our correspondent reports that 11 people have so far been arrested in this regard. The deaths were first reported in Lakshmipur village of Turkulia police station followed by Harsiddhi, Pahadpur and Sugoli areas of Motihari. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar said it is a sad incident and asked for all information related to it. Union Minister of State for Cooperation BL Verma has said that the central government is bringing out a new cooperative policy soon to increase the per capita income of the farmers. He was speaking after attending the convocation ceremony at Vaikunth Mehta Cooperative Research Institute in Pune today. Mr Verma said the central government is preparing the world's largest food storage scheme which will be implemented soon so that the farmers food grains do not go to waste. The minister said petrol pumps and LPG gas agencies would be provided in the country in the future through primary agricultural credit societies he said the central government has set a target of creating 2 lakh more new development societies Science and Technology Minister Dr Jitendra Singh has said India is all set to lead diabetes research in the world Dr Singh said India has a huge resource pool of patients with different manifestations of diseases at different stages at the same time there is no dearth of caliber capacity and acumen on the part of the country's researchers dr singh was delivering the inaugural address at the 3 day world diabetes meet organized in new delhi today the minister said within 2 years india not only managed the covid pandemic successfully better than much smaller countries but also succeeded in coming out with a dna vaccine and providing it to other countries as well In Karnataka 200 nominations were received for the legislative assembly elections today among the candidates who filed the nominations 184 are male and 16 female candidates according to the party wise breakup 26 nominations were received from BJP 20 from JDS 5 from Congress party 22 from AAP 2 from CPIM 84 from other registered and unrecognized parties and 41 from independents Chief Minister Basavaraj Bommai filed his nomination from Shigaon today. Meanwhile, Congress today released its third list of 43 candidates for the Karnataka Assembly elections. The party has fielded former Deputy CM Lakshman Savadi from Ashtani constituency and G Manjunath from Kolar Assembly constituency. The Congress has so far released a list of 209 candidates for the 224 member assembly in Karnataka on the other hand the BJP has released a list of 212 candidates Voting for the Karnataka assembly elections will take place on the 10th of next month in a single phase counting of votes will be held on the 13th of May At least 15 devotees including 7 children died and many more were injured after a tractor trolley fell from a bridge in Tugara River in Shah Jahanpur district of Uttar Pradesh. The accident took place in Tilhar's Bersingpur village. The driver of the tractor carrying more than 40 devotees in the trolley lost control and the tractor fell into the river after breaking the railing of the bridge. The villagers were going to participate in a religious function in a nearby village. 
Eleven people have been rescued and are being treated at different hospitals. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar has expressed grief over the loss of lives in the accident. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also expressed grief over the loss of lives due to the mishap. The Prime Minister announced the annex grace of 2 lakh rupees from the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund to the next of kin of each of the deceased, while 50,000 rupees will be given to the injured. In another accident, at least 12 persons lost their lives and more than 25 persons were injured after a private bus fell into a gorge in the Kopoli area of Maharashtra's Raigarh district today. 16 people have been brought out safely. The accident occurred along the old Mumbai-Pune highway. President Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have expressed deep grief over the mishap. The Prime Minister announced an ex of 2 lakh rupees from the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund to the next of kin. Of each of the deceased, 50,000 rupees will be given to the injured. Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Chinde has announced a compensation of 5 lakh rupees to the family members of the deceased. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has appealed to the youth to come up with new ideas to empower the country in the field of science and technology and help the government in its efforts to make India safer, stronger and self-reliant. He was addressing the 16th convocation of Janardhan Rai Nagar Rajasthan Vidya Peet in Udaipur today. He called upon the young, ignited minds to ideate, innovate, research and make headways in the field to take the country to greater heights. जब तक हम विद्यार्थियों का नागरिकों का समग्र विकास नहीं करते हैं तब तक हम राष्ट्र और समाज के संपूर्ण विकास की कभी कल्पना भी नहीं कर सकते और यदि हम इस राष्ट्र को ऊंचाइयों पर ले जाना चाहते हैं अंतर्राष्ट्रीय जगत में भारत का मस्तक यदि हम ऊंचा करना चाहते हैं यह तब तक संभव नहीं है जबकि हर व्यक्ति की पर्सनालिटी का उसके व्यक्तित्व का एक कंप्रिहेंसिव डेवलपमेंट न हो जब तक समग्र विकास न हो in Jammu and Kashmir, the 62-day-long Sri Amarnath Ji Yatra will commence on the 1st of July this year and culminate on the 31st of August 2023. The Yatra will commence simultaneously from both the routes, the Pahalgam track in Anantnag district and Balthal in Kandarbal district. The registration process through online and offline models modes for, yatra, for the Yatra will start from the 17th of April. A two-day global conference on compressed biogas will be held in New Delhi from Monday. Petroleum and Natural Gas Ministry said the theme of the conference is towards progressive policy framework for a robust CBG foundation and growth. The objective of this conference is to apprise the industry regarding the initiatives taken by the central government for the development of the compressed biogas industry and to identify the areas where policy modifications are required. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. All India Radio is presenting vignettes of select quotes of the Prime Minister from Man Ki Baat as the program completes its 100th episode on the 30th of this month. Today, in the 64th episode of this special program, let's listen to excerpts in which the Prime Minister narrated how India reached out to the world with a helping hand during the corona pandemic. People, voice and direct dialogue. That's your and our Man Ki Baat. Yes, this is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. Let us recollect the words of the Prime Minister in this episode where he spoke about India reaching out to the world with a helping hand during the COVID pandemic. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, which gives the concept of one earth, one family and one future, is the mantra of India's civilization. It was amply reflected during the corona pandemic. With this attitude and spirit, India reached out to several countries across the world and rushed supplies of medicines and vaccines to them. In the Man Ki Baat program broadcast on 26th April 2020, the Prime Minister spoke about the steps that India undertook for the sake of humanity at large. In this time, the world is also the world for the world. It is a time that if India doesn't give the world, 
तो कोई भारत को दोषी नहीं मानता हर देश समझ रहा है कि भारत के लिए भी उसकी प्राथमिकता अपने नागरिकों का जीवन बचाना है लेकिन साथियों भारत ने प्रकृति विकृति की सोच से परे होकर फैसला लिया भारत ने अपनी संस्कृति के अनुरूप फैसला लिया हमने भारत की आवश्यकताओं के लिए जो करना था उसका प्रयास तो बढ़ाया ही लेकिन दुनिया भर से आ रही मानवता की रक्षा की पुकार पर भी पूरा पूरा ध्यान दिया Moving on to is from Bharat Gaurav train pay tributes to Dr B R Ambedkar at his birthplace Mao in Madhya Pradesh today. Students from Myanmar and Vietnam traveling in the train also visited the site and paid tributes. They expressed gratitude to the government for arranging such a trip. During the 8-day tour the train will cover many cities including Nagpur, Varanasi and sacred Buddhist sites like Sanchi, Sarnath, Gaya, Rajgir and Nalanda. The train was flagged off by the Union Tourism and Culture Minister GK Reddy yesterday. The 59th seminar Miss India 2023 grand finale is going on now at the indoor stadium of Kumon Lumpur Sports Complex in Imphal. This is the first time that the prestigious competition is going to be held in the northeast region. More from our Imphal correspondent. After a few hours, the country will know who is the Femina Miss India 2023 among the 30 contestants. All arrangements have been in place for the dazzling finale. Miss India World 2022, Sini Sethi of Karnataka will crown her successor who will represent India at Miss World 2024. JJ Thoksom, AIR News, Imphal. In Sudan, fierce fighting has been reported between the army and paramilitary forces. Tension prevailed over a proposed transition to civilian rule. Capital Khartoum is under duress as civilians are struggling to seek shelter due to the ongoing power struggle. So far, three civilians have been killed and nine injured at Khartoum Airport and in the neighboring North Kordofan state. The battle has caused panic and fear among the lo- locals as roads and bridges have gone under lockdown with people being stuck in between. Tensions increased between the government and the paramilitary group in recent days after they failed to reach an agreement last week over transitioning to a civilian-led government. Western powers and regional leaders have urged the two sides to de-escalate tensions and go back to talks aimed at restoring civilian rule. Montana becomes the first US state to pass legislation banning TikTok on personal devices. TikTok has been accused of posing a national security risk through data gathered from users. The bill was passed by a vote of 54 to 43. It cites a number of concerns about TikTok including a less surveillance from the Chinese government and encouragement of dangerous activities among young users the legislation makes it illegal for app stores to offer TikTok however it excludes the present users of the app In a move that could make history, Germany is going to shut down its three remaining nuclear power plants, its R2, Emsland and Neckar Weisheim, two all of which are set to go offline by tonight. Nuclear energy is an emotional issue for Germany which is both opinionated and biased regarding the use of nuclear energy. According to the Federal Statistical Office, Germany got almost half of its electricity from renewables in 2022 and just 6% from atomic power. In IPL cricket, the match between Punjab Kings and Lucknow Super Giants is underway. Punjab Kings won the toss and put Lucknow Super Giants to bat. Lucknow Super Giants were 150 for 5 in 18.3 overs a short while ago. Earlier in another match, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeated Delhi Capitals by 23 runs at the Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bengaluru this evening. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Spurious liquor claims 22 lives in Motihari, Bihar. Center to bring out a new cooperative policy soon to increase per capita income of farmers. India all set to lead diabetes research in the world says Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. Nomination process picks up for the coming assembly elections in Karnataka. Fierce fighting reported between army and paramilitaries in Sudanese capital Khartoum. And in IPL cricket Royal Challengers Bangalore defeat Delhi Capitals by 23 runs at Bengaluru another match between Lucknow Super Giants and Punjab Kings underway in Lucknow 
that is all in the news at 9. Good night.